So I'm back visiting family and friends, and I'm staying in Thomasville, Georgia. And I asked my mom to come out and have some drinks with me tonight. When I was little, my mom never drank. It wasn't until recently that I found out she was drinking occasionally. And hell, I thought that would be really fun to have a drink with my mom. I've never done that. Never thought I would be doing that. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Ooh, good to see you. I like your dress. You want us to sit here? Yeah. So are you actually drinking tonight? Yeah. What do you want? I was going to have a margarita, but what's that? That looks good. This is a Clark Kent. I think it's a, I want to say a gin. Mm -hmm. Take a sip out of the cup. Out of the cup. Margarita. <laughs> Barry is pretty firmly, you know, anti-alcohol of any kind, except for kombucha. Being his wife all of these years, I just kind of supported that and went along with everything that he said. I don't think he really knows that I, you know, am having an occasional drink here and there. Hey, cheers to our first drink together. Cheers. How much money would it take for you to do a shot? I'm not doing a shot. Oh, no. Cheers, guys. <laughs> it's on me. It's on me. Do you want to? You, we'll cheers. You take a sip, and I'll take the rest. Okay, we okay? can do that. Cheers. Just drink however much you can. Good one? Mm. He's going to finish it for that me. That is really good. So nice, you're going to have it twice. How long have you been drinking again? Um, not not meaning that in like a bad way. Yeah, sometimes no, people, I mean, that kind of sounds like um, judgmental or whatever. Yeah, I have started seeing myself as individual, you know, distinct from him. When I first heard about my mom and dad separating, that was a huge shock. And I just kind of realized that I didn't know them very well and I didn't spend as much time as I would like to with them. I guess where I'm at right now is, I, you know, I've lived a life the last 20 some years of abstaining from almost everything. And now I kind of feel like, you know what? I know God, God knows me, I'm saved. Life's short, it's okay to have some fun, you know? Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at now. I feel like I have the freedom now to go out and have a drink of, with, with you, for example. You didn't if feel I like you to. had freedom to do that before? No, no. Even if you, like, did you ever talk to Dad about, like... Well, I just knew how he felt. But you didn't bring up, like, I, this I mean, is what I would like to do? No. And I, I really... It's not that I, I was sitting at home going, oh, I really want to drink and I can't. It's not. Because I really didn't, I, I never even thought about it. Did you ever like talk to dad much about like the way you were feeling about certain things before you? Like what? Like, I don't know, that you, you weren't happy. You wanted to do Yeah, I mean, I. I started talking yeah. to him about it after I kind of put some pieces together, you know. And the thing is, dad is really hard to connect with emotionally. And that's what I'm realizing I'm craving. I'm craving like a real connection to somebody. I agree with you, he is hard to yeah. connect with. I kind of feel like now, especially with what's going on, he's making more of an effort to be open and being able to Easier to talk to, I guess. Yeah. As little kids, we used to beg to ride in the truck with our dad when he would take the trash out. You know, it was like a five mile ride to the dumpster. I remember so many times I wanted to ask him something, but I just, I was little and I was like, didn't have the nerve to ask him. I just feel like communication was really bad in our family. And I feel like both of our parents have realized that now and they're definitely trying to work on it and all of us kids are too. I guess where I'm at now is just trying to understand what happened to you and dad. What were your stories? Yeah. And what made you raise us the way you did? You have anything you want to tell well, me about her? I mean, I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. Um, I just want to connect with him and I want him to kind of understand more where I'm coming from.
and understand more about his childhood. I don't want to burden them with that information when they're really young. And then when they get older, there comes a point where I feel like they're ready to hear it and I'm ready to, to talk with them about it. And really that hadn't happened until tonight. It's uncomfortable. I mean, one, there were several things, but one, one thing that is kind of big in terms of how it affected me is when I was um, four and five, my mom, who was a single parent and doing the best that she could, um, hired a babysitter to watch me. And he was a teenage boy. And I can just say, when you have little girls, the last thing you want is for them to be at the wrong place at the wrong time and have something happen. So that was a regular thing for me growing up from, you know, the, I mean, just four and five, those ages. If you read the statistics, the people that are most likely to do something like that are people that are close to the family, people that you don't suspect. I chose to tell Micah tonight some things about some abuse that I experienced, you know, when I was a child. But hopefully he'll have a little more understanding of um, who I am and how I came to parent like I did. I feel like I processed this a long time ago, but it's just more, you know, helping Micah have some understanding. That was why I always knew where they were, what they were doing, who they were with, whatever. That played a very large part in me being protective, maybe overprotective, but I mean, to me, the risk of not being overprotective enough is so great that I'd, I'd rather err on the side of overprotecting than under and have something like that happen. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't I know. It hurts hearing this, but I'm glad she's telling me. It gives me more of an understanding of who she is as a person and the way she raised us, the rules she had, and the walls she had built. It's like a penny drop moment. When soon she told me all the pieces fit together. I guess I only realized, like, my dad's reasoning is I thought it was all out of religion. Yeah. Like, that's all that was talked about. Right, because I wasn't going to tell you the other when you're little. I mean, I kind of figured when I was 17, 18, I kind of realized that, like, there had to have been something that I'd never heard about that made you raise us the way we were, but yeah. I never heard what it was. So. Yeah. My motivation was to protect the children and to raise them in a wholesome environment. Every parent makes the best choices that they can, given what they have to work with. And, I mean, I I'm no different. Hey, I'm glad you came out tonight. Yeah. It's been I'm fun. Too. I'm, I'm not here very often, but I'm glad we were able to go out. Yeah. Growing up, I heard very few stories from my mom or my dad about the childhood. I always felt like my parents were perfect. So I always felt so much disapproval because I wasn't perfect. Because of that, there's never the environment of, well, just talk to me. I'm not going to judge you. Hearing this from my mom, I realize we're just all humans. We all have problems. Kind of just open, opens up a bigger connection.